Hi, you've clicked on to the Tropical Tidbit for Friday, September 30th, 2016. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office. Well, we continue to track Hurricane Matthew in the Central Caribbean Sea. This has undergone some impressive intensification since last night, really defying all forecasts and getting stronger than expected during the last 24 hours. This has deepened all the way into a Category 4 hurricane with winds of 140 miles per hour sustained with gusts higher than that, and the pressure is now down to 948 millibars. The recon aircraft that's been in there today saw the pressure fall over 12 millibars during the course of the flight and a west-southwest motion has been observed here. The reason this data is so cluttered is because the plane took a very large number of passes through the eye, sampling it all day. And there's a lot of data here, but all this purple color indicates the hurricane force wind field uh, to the north of the northern tip of Columbia down here, and a general west-southwest motion with these orange dots can be seen here. That's the position of the eye over time. It has been moving very slowly westward, which you can see on satellite as well. This very slow west-to-west-southwest track continues, and it is beginning to slow down a bit now, and this is ahead of the anticipated turn that will eventually occur toward the north or northwest here over the next couple of days. And right now, uh, this is not a, a huge deal for this part of the coastline, though there is a tropical storm warning out for the northern tip of Colombia, and there may have been tropical storm conditions in Aruba and surrounding islands at one point earlier today. I have not checked on that, but there may have been in some of these squalls. And right now, the northern tip of Colombia is likely seeing the worst conditions on the south side of the hurricane, but right now the eye is well to the north and not expected to bring more than tropical storm conditions to this area of the coast. Coastline. It gets worse though unfortunately for the islands out ahead of the hurricane, namely Jamaica and perhaps the western tip of Haiti as this is expected to make that turn toward the north and this has the potential to make a direct hit on Jamaica and unfortunately the track is leaning toward the eastern side of the island at the moment which is where Kingston is, the most populated area of the island. So this is definitely a serious situation that folks should be preparing for earnestly if you live up here. Uh, this hurricane expected to be in that area sometime on Monday and right now is moving pretty slowly so there's a lot of time for its intensity to evolve between now and then but right now it is expected to remain a major hurricane by that time. And exactly how strong it is may not matter so much as it is expected to be very powerful at the very least. Uh, as far as the intensity does go over the short term, this has obviously gotten stronger than expected, uh, but there's a couple of things still to keep an eye out for. It may not be done intensifying in the short term. We still may see it even stronger later this evening, but it has to stop at some time. And uh, a couple things that may stop it still is the dry air up to the northwest near Jamaica and Haiti, which again could get wrapped in the circulation, into the circulation over time as the hurricane moves westward. And uh, a hurricane like... Um, Matthew here is still relatively young uh, considering it just became a hurricane yesterday and uh, has quickly intensified to this point but it remains rather small to medium sized as a result and there's there's not many spiral bands on the western side so the circulation is not very large and thus the inner core could be more susceptible to dry air coming in on the western side and you can see that there are some outflow boundaries right here at the end of the loop right there racing away out from the west of the hurricane indicating that these thunderstorms and some of these spiral bands are collapsing out in front of Matthew's track. That's thanks to this dry air I'm talking about over here. So it may be that the hurricane is susceptible to some dry entrainment which could cause weakening episodes periodically during the next three days or so. Uh, that's just an educated guess, not really sure. It's always hard to tell whether the dry air will actually get in. And major hurricanes of this intensity also undergo eyewall replacement cycles where the inner eyewall uh, shrinks and outer eyewall forms and then it has a double eyewall for a while. The outer one can then contract suffocate the old eye, the hurricane weakens during that time, and then the outer wall takes over as the primary one, and you get a brand new eye that's usually larger, and then the system can re-intensify. So there's always these fluctuations in intensity that can occur with strong hurricanes that are very difficult to predict. In fact, they are essentially unpredictable unless you're seeing them happen in front of your eyes. And so there's you know some unpredictability to exactly how Matthew's intensity could evolve, but the bottom line is it's expected to be a major hurricane on approach to Jamaica on late Sunday or Monday, and so this is obviously a, a serious event for the Greater Antilles coming up, and this could affect Haiti and eastern Cuba as well down the line. 
Now here's the water vapor imagery showing briefly that whatever southwesterly shear was over the Caribbean does not seem to be affecting Matthew anymore. This is one of the reasons we thought it would not intensify as much as this, uh, but it has done that in the face of the shear, and we see some outflow expanding out in the southwest quadrant as well, though most of the outflow remains to the northeast, uh, largely because of that general prevailing southwesterly flow aloft. But Matthew doesn't seem to care about the shear for the moment, so assuming that the shear isn't a problem uh, for the hurricane uh, for the next little while, this little trough is going, well it's actually not so little, this large trough is going to sit over the Gulf of Mexico for the next several days in basically the same place, uh, but shear is not expected to really change that much out ahead of the hurricane. So the shear is expected to remain about the same, and as it continues to move to the north here, we'll have to see if that can force any of this dry air into the western side of the circulation, but for the moment, it doesn't seem to be a problem for the storm and outflow will likely remain healthy to the north. So conditions in general, considering how warm the water is here, uh, tend to support this remaining a strong hurricane through the duration of its life uh, up through the southwest Atlantic, which is where it's expected to be in five or six days. And there's no reason to think that this is going to drastically weaken, except for, of course, the potential passage over the mountains of Jamaica, Cuba, or Haiti, which will obviously weaken the hurricane once it moves over, but reintensification on the other side is possible in the Bahamas. So all of these land areas here could be dealing with the threat of a major hurricane with winds well over 100 miles per hour possible in many regions here, depending on the exact track. Uh, so this is obviously a concern now uh, for all of these regions, and as we go out in time, things uh, are getting a little bit clearer, at least in the short term. This is the GFS out to day four, showing the 500 millibar pattern, roughly the steering layer for the storm, and this is where Matthew is off the northern coast of Cuba after coming up just over eastern Jamaica and into eastern Cuba here, coming up out of the south. You can see this trough over the Gulf of Mexico. This is what is guiding it northward. Uh, there's the ridge to its east, and the trough to its west, and between these the flow is out of the south, so it brings the hurricane pretty clearly out of the Caribbean, and we don't have any chance for any kind of funny track into the Gulf like this. This is no longer on the table, really. This is fully expected to come up to the north of Cuba and into the Bahamas. After this point, though, things are still a little bit uncertain because we're dealing with a complex pattern. So we have the trough here, the ridge to the east. Now, we have this blocking ridge to the north, but there's this upper little upper trough off of New England that continues to sit underneath of this blocking ridge. And this is the upper level low currently over the Ohio Valley that kind of slides east here. And we've talked about this before being a feature of interest for the track forecast of Matthew because depending on how long this hangs around, that determines where this ridge is set up and how much it can build toward the eastern seaboard. The, the, more, the farther away this ridge is, the more likely that Matthew stays to the east of the United States. But if this trough were to somehow exit the scene, and if this trough was not here, this ridge has a better chance to connect to the eastern seaboard a little bit more and force Matthew into the east coast somewhere. Now at the moment, uh, the models agree in general that some kind of weakness will remain over the mid-Atlantic and the northwest Atlantic, setting the edge of this ridge and directing the steering flow this way, such that Matthew generally avoids the United States on most projections. However, there are some models that show the hurricane moving slower than it does on the GFS, and it really takes forever moving north in the Bahamas. And if this were to occur, there's more time for traffic to go by to the north. This trough can leave, this ridge can move over, and then this trough enters the scene, and all sorts of stuff can start happening such that it becomes a little more uncertain where it goes after it starts sitting around in the Bahamas. Here's day five. And you can see that it is moving pretty slowly, even on the GFS now, but this ridge is still here. And you can see that our little trough has moved well off of New England, but there's still some remnant weakness left in here. And as it stands on this pattern, this would avoid the United States on a track like this, most likely, uh, on, if this particular model run were to come true. However, this is a pretty uncertain zone of uh, troughiness here, and the forecast has changed a lot over time. This is the run from just six hours ago for the same time. This is 12Z Wednesday of next week. Note the difference in the trough here. You see how it's stronger on the previous run and farther west. On the current run, 
it has changed character. So right now the forecast is still uncertain as to what's going to happen in this area of troughiness off the mid-Atlantic. Exactly how this evolves determines how the steering flow around the hurricane evolves as it is as it moves into the Bahamas. And then we have this trough coming into the Great Plains. Its character will change too. Here's the previous run. Note how the trough is in a different position than the current run. So this is just an example of how not any one run of the model is going to tell you exactly what's going to happen. All we can say is that here's some general features to watch. Here's what the general steering flow will be like. We expect it to come north into the Bahamas and right now most most scenarios keep this east of the United States but is it possible that this could impact Florida or impact the Carolinas or anywhere up the eastern seaboard? The answer is yes it is possible. How likely is it? At the moment it seems more likely that this will manage to stay east of the U.S., but that's only for the moment. We're talking about uh, next week, five, six, seven days or more in the future. It's just not possible to know for sure ever when we're talking about a hurricane where it's going to be in seven days. We just don't know. That's not something we can do with our current technology. So for now, just something to watch if you live in the southeast United States, but for the Bahamas, Cuba, Jamaica, and Haiti, this is a very real threat, and the track is... Uh, it expected to be right through this area and perhaps moving fairly slowly, which means that flooding is a big, big problem for the mountainous areas of Haiti, Cuba, and Jamaica, and perhaps later down the road, the Bahamas. And again, the water is every bit as much, if not more, of a danger as the wind. Even with a major hurricane here, the mudslides and flash flooding can be more effective at wiping away a house than the wind can by itself. So this is a, a big problem for this region. Here's the National Hurricane Center official forecast showing a major hurricane hurricane uh, curving up just near the eastern tip of Jamaica and then across Cuba on Tuesday, passing by Jamaica on Monday afternoon here. Uh, the exact timing of this could still change a little bit, but in general sometime on Monday is expected to be closest approach or landfall near Jamaica, and there is a tropical storm watch up for Haiti, hurricane watch up for Jamaica given how close the track is, and then on up into the Bahamas, where again the storm would likely weaken upon crossing the mountains of Cuba and or Jamaica or Haiti, but then restrengthening on the other side is possible late in the term. But at this point at day five, it's hard to know what the hurricane will look like and what conditions it will be dealing with by that time. But again, uh, right now, the atmosphere favors this remaining a strong hurricane throughout the duration of its life as it moves up into this region of the world. So this is going to cause problems wherever it goes. And unfortunately, it's hitting a lot of places here in the three to five day period. So we'll keep a close eye on the hurricane and uh, continue to track it. Hopefully it doesn't strengthen too much more, but for now, a very powerful category four, Hurricane Matthew. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.